Good day, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve, and you'll never guess where I'm at. Yes, you guessed it. I'm at the secret world headquarters of Camerodactyl Cameras and the chief elf himself, Ethan Moses, here. And uh, Ethan's been busy during the COVID-19 lockdown. He has been really productive, and I came by to see what he's been up to. So, Ethan, you have been working on some interesting things, right? When you, and specifically related to sketching and drawing and all that. And actually, this started, guys, before the COVID thing. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Uh -huh. I don't know, five or six months ago, you were over here every Tuesday scanning some of your old books. Um, and during that time, I was trying to draw a large format shutter in SolidWorks. And I got really frustrated because I would make a mechanism and then I would make another mechanism and then they wouldn't quite fit. And so I'd have to redraw the first one and move it. And um, it just got really slow uh, having to redo everything in CAD. And so I thought I needed to get better at just sketching by hand, at least for like the positions and space tolerances for uh, different mechanisms. So I started drawing, which then you sent me on this whole like <laughs> mechanical pencil and uh, pen and book binding uh, thing. And then I built that ventilator with a bunch of people, um, none of which were in the US. So uh, there was a lot of drawing. I was actually on the phone with a guy in Mumbai uh, taking apart a valve this morning. And like, you know, everybody kind of spoke English, but uh, drawing was, kind of the, the universal language. I've been working on this scanner project and that took a lot of drawing, both like electrical schematics and um, uh, mechanical housings and mechanisms and things. And last week uh, I was talking to my friend Graham from the Homemade Camera Podcast and he is designing a four by 10 uh, folding field camera. And he, you know, was like kind of struggling with the dimensions of things. And I did a little bit of math for him about the geometry of what the bellows had to look like. And I said, you know, like, Graham, you should really be sketching this by hand first. It's going to take you forever in SolidWorks. If you take a day and draw every mechanism by hand and then go into SolidWorks, it'll be that much faster, if oh. not 10 times faster. Okay. Um, and so Graham's a graphic designer. He's way better at drawing than me, but also had never taken a high school drafting class. And so I said, look, give me an hour of your time. I'll set up my camera, like looking down at my table as a webcam, and I'll give you, you know, the first six months of high school drafting in an hour, uh, which we did. And I came up with um, some 3D printed like uh, triangles and T-square just for like a notebook, nothing precise, but just, you know, they would yeah. hook on here. And so I sent that to Graham and sent that to my friend Simon in London. And so they could print them out with me without me having to ship them things. And then we did that and that was pretty fun. And I've just been doing a lot of drawing of late and it's gotten more and more annoying <clears throat> to try and draw more complex mechanisms in a small notebook. I used to, before the quarantine, I carried a notebook that would fit in my pocket. I figured I did not need such a small notebook now that I just walk 40 feet to my house. This is the, the only place I go. So I made a bigger one, but still this is a little small um, and a T-square on the edge of a notebook is not perfect. So uh, I decided I needed a drafting board and then I kind of got inspired by those old like artist easel uh, drawing boxes. And I saw some online that were probably cheaper than I could have even just bought the materials for this thing. Mm. Um, but they didn't have like uh, parallel rules for drafting. And yeah. so I made that drafting box yesterday. So Ethan, how has um, the hand sketching whole thing, how does that change your relationship with CAD and with designing things? Well, so uh, I guess I took a, I'm, I've never been a good uh, artist, you know, um, drawing things from life is tough, uh, but I do like technical drawing. So I think you can actually teach people life drawing and you can teach them technical drawing. The difference is, is once you teach them life drawing, they need to practice for 10 years. Whereas if you teach somebody technical drawing the next day, they can go use it um, because you're using tools that don't require, you know, uh, you can just measure things, right? And, and follow lines on tools. Um, and so I, I took a, 
um, hand drafting class in high school. I think everybody had to take one and then we took CAD. In fact, there's a floppy disk over there uh, that is my CAD drafting files from high school. Uh, I don't have a floppy reader, but one day I want to see if I can pull those files off. I can't even remember what program they were. It was very terrible. It was not SolidWorks at the time. Um, and so I've always had like those kind of uh, skills, very, you know, like not professional, but yeah. uh, good enough. Um, and then since I've been 3D printing, I pretty much up until maybe six or seven months ago would do very few hand sketches. Um, but like looking at all of your hand sketches of all of your cameras over 30 years, uh, it was like very inspiring. I, in fact, like the the drawings better than some of the cameras, which is why I've been pushing <laughs> you to make that book. Yes. Um, and and I, just as things have gotten more and more complicated, it's become way easier to use a pencil and an eraser to, you know, move mechanisms around and like mm -hmm. try things iteratively until I'm ready. And then, you know, what I've been trying to challenge myself to do is like start with um, like just a couple sketches of what the rough outline of the thing is and then break it down into all of the mechanisms and then draw each one of the mechanisms and then add in dimensions and like, you know, so this drafting box, I started, you know, there's one really simple drawing of a box that opens and has drafting board on it. And then it goes to like iteratively like a cross wire system and then parallel rail system. And then like, you know, I drew five or six or seven different locking mechanisms for the door and a bunch of different hinges. And so by the time I was done, I like made myself a list of like which drawings contained which pieces that I wanted in the final thing. And then I sat down for an hour or two, drew the final piece, and then I went into SolidWorks wow. and knocked it out in eight hours, wow. uh, which is a long time. Um, and then I made some errors because I didn't buy the material uh, before I started drafting. And I bought the material on the way to the laser cutter, got to the laser cutter, realized everything was you know, 5.2 instead of 3.9 millimeters thick. And so then I had to uh, adjust the CAD files mm -hmm. fast before I lost my laser cutter time. And so there's a few dimensional errors, but um, yeah. you know, it's a good prototype, even though I might not make another one because I don't think it's a product. There's this relationship you have with, you had with the computer, with the laptop, and now you have this thing with a sketchbook and pens and pencils. Mm -hmm. how, how are the tools different? How do the, the interaction with them, how does that work for you? I mean, that's a real open-ended question that might require a smarter person to answer. I mean, so to be fair, I've always made sketches of things. Right. Um, I've just sort of taken the, the drawing more seriously of late. Um, I don't know, the, the tools can be faster for imprecise things uh, by hand and much slower for precise things. Uh, my friend Graham wanted to know how long to make his bellows. Um, and I said, it depends on a couple of factors, right? What is the uh, focal length of the lens? What is the distance of the closest object you're gonna photograph? Um, what is the height of the rear bellows and the height of the front bellows? And so like I, <laughs> I made him this sheet of paper of like, this is the formula for coming up with uh, bellows dimensions, right, for the pattern, uh, which he thought was like a little ridiculous. But to be honest, like, you know, I had to look up one over DO plus one over DI equals uh, one over the focal length is like a standard high school optics thing, but I hadn't used that in a while. Um, and it took me 10 minutes to do this, but in SolidWorks, um, you know, like, you don't necessarily have to calculate a hypotenuse. You can just draw it and then measure it. The computer does the math for you. And so I think as things get more complex, it's still easier to do them on a computer, but like, I don't know, the ability to change things on the fly is, is nice, which to some degree, if you're careful in SolidWorks, you can do, but um, yeah, erasers are great. So there's a certain place where working on paper at a certain part of the design stage, working on paper gives you some kind of flexibility early on that you can't yeah. get in with a computer later on, or it's more yeah. kludgy. So it's it's a good way. Like I'll, I'll show you the 
drawings I did for the latches on this box. It allowed me, you know, in 25 minutes to draw seven different mechanisms. Not precisely, but enough that I could sort of think about how they interact. Is it a buckle? Is it a swinging latch? Is it a screw? Um, and I could just bang those out and like look at them and think about them and then think like, okay, this is, this is the one. Whereas, you know, each one of those things might have taken me an hour or two in SolidWorks to draw perfectly and figure out the tolerances, but not having to do that, you know, I could get everything really close on paper and then just read my notebook as I'm on a computer. So Ethan, tell us about the tools. Like when you started going down this rabbit hole of sketching and drawing, you sort of had to discover the tools of the craft and pens and pencils and paper and notebooks. Tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah, I mean, so like who hasn't used a pen or a pencil? Um, I even f had used like a, like a lead holder and lead sharpener, like all the drafting tools way back when. In fact, I had to buy some triangles, a T-square and like, I don't know, a compass uh, a number of years ago when my sister was trying to file plans for a food cart. I just had to make some, you know, like architectural engineering sketches for it. And so I have those T squares somewhere around here. Um, but yeah, I've, I've kind of been on like this really nerdy quest to find my favorite pencil, <laughs> uh, and make, uh, you know, parallel rules or T squares that work in a way that I like. So I made this little tiny mini T square, uh, that works in my notebook, which I dig, but it's not a good one. I mean, how good is it going to be using a notebook as a square? Uh, so a while ago I was just looking for, um, sort of like engineering drawing pens, mostly for, um, like the ventilator type of stuff. And, uh, like circuit diagrams. Um, and so I really like the uh, Pilot V, uh, V5 and V7, the rollerball ones. Um, and then like you kind of got me on this kick of <clears throat> can we 3D print pens, which we did. And then we were looking for like the best uh, refill for those pens. And you know, they're pretty good. I made some glow in the dark and color change ones, but you know, you could buy a good pen for way less than I can make one for. And so then um, we were thinking about 3D printing a fountain pen a while back on this resin printer over here. And so I bought the cheapest fountain pen on, uh, on AliExpress and, you know, for the purpose of putting it through a bandsaw so I could see what the innards look like because I didn't really know. Um, and then it came like three months later, I had forgotten about it and I could just take it apart. I didn't know. Um, and that pen, I think it was $1.67 with shipping from China. Um, I in fact eventually bought you one, but it didn't get to you for weeks because I refused to spend $3 and 45 cents to ship the pen four miles to your house. Um, uh, but I really loved it. Uh, it makes writing faster. It's not a really good drawing pen. I'm not like, a you can't really follow a ruler with a fountain pen to my knowledge, or I can't. Um, but so I, I got into like buying all of the, uh, you know, sub $5 pens on AliExpress to see which ones I like. And so now I have like a bunch of pens that I hate, and, like a couple that I really like. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really matter what, like my handwriting is not great. I just write down funny things that happen or things I want to remember that really didn't uh, get me as interested as pencils mm. uh, really make a difference. Um, so I bought all sorts of like pencil leads and different types of technical drafting pencils. And I've got a few now. I, I got some, uh, like, they're not that fancy, but uh, I, I own an $18 pencil now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> it's something, yeah. 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 <laughs> So, uh, so you continue to draw with like a combination of ink and pencil in your sketchbooks, maybe? Yeah, so it depends, I guess, what it is that I'm drawing. I've been going more towards pencil. Um, I got real annoyed. I have, I'll show you a, a circuit diagram that I made that has just a million traces going everywhere. And like, at that point, it really makes sense to make colored lines. Um, but I mess up often in like an eraser. So I wound up buying some like four year old uh, Crayola erasable color pencils, which are really crayons, but they're fine. Uh, I use those a lot, but these guys I drew, um, you know, first by hand, then in SolidWorks. Um, and then I printed out an exploded isometric view from SolidWorks, which is just the black and white. And then I just use like 
um, you know, a bunch of those pilot pens in different colors to sort of trace pneumatic routing, uh, just as diagrams for other people to make it really clear in a manual. And so, you know, I mean, this is not like the most artistic drawings, but I, I use some, some combo of, you know, digital and analog processes. Well, okay, Ethan, so show us this drafting table that you designed. I really wanted like a drafting board. A friend of mine offered me a drafting table, but I'm gonna put a giant laser over here. And so I have to move these things over there. And like, I just, I don't have room for a drafting table. So I thought I'd make a drafting board and I went through a bunch of iterations. We'll take a look at the sketches later. So I just made this like little briefcase type thing. Um, and it's got these parallel slots here. Um, you slide these open and the board opens up. Uh, it's got room in here to store a parallel rule. I need to make one that's a little less floppy. Um, and then it's got this guy to store some drawings and larger tools. And I just made these uh, pencil boxes uh, here and here just because they fit and I had some extra wood and I was trying to use the whole buffalo. Um, so you can use it all the way down or um, in a number of angled positions. Probably how I would use it is just a very slight angle um, for most of the time, but you can also go up uh, about another 10 degrees or uh, a more steep angle or uh, even this angle or I think it has one more. Yeah. So show that us how, angle. for people that aren't familiar with drafting tools, how do the grooves and the board there work? So, yeah, so let's set it up. Um, pretty steep angle, but um, I might put some rubber feet so it doesn't slide around my desk. But, I mean, imagine these being bigger. Yeah, You'd use a T-square. This is just for a notebook yeah. on one side and then a triangle on the other yep. to draw all different uh, right. sorts of parallel right. angles. Right. Um, and then you could also mount it like this and move around the board. Uh, anyway, I have a T-square somewhere that's longer. Right. What I dislike about that is it really requires one hand to hold the T-square down and in place. And so um, it's kind of, uh, you, you gotta be like kind of dexterous to use all of the tools at the same time. So what's nice about a drafting table is often it will have some sort of parallel rule, um, either sliding in channels like this, or um, I really love the type that has a cross wire in the back mm -hmm. and a pulley system. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also like a drafting machine, which we get into. I've never actually used one of those, but they seem pretty cool. Yep. Um, so this has like these runners. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a little too wobbly, so it binds. I just made this yesterday, but um, you know, the idea is it slides up and down nice. like, mm, like that. Um, and then I actually bought the wrong threaded M8 screws, but I'll have two knobs here and you can lock it. Um, so if you're going to make a series of, you know, uh, series of parallel lines like mm -hmm. this, you can lock this guy in place and right. work off of a parallel rule. But right. um, this is pretty useful for drawing all sorts of things. Yeah, so I made two of these. Um, they're way oversized for pencils, but, um, you know, that was the size of the holes in the drafting board. And this is built around like an 11 by 17 piece of paper. I made one of these with a hole in it so you could open this thing up. And then I made this one with a bunch of holes in it so that you could put uh, oh, yeah. pencils like that while you're using them just as nice. like a little stand. Nice, very uh, cool. It's a medium, medium nice feature. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have a drafting board up until uh, early this morning and still it could use some fixes, but um, you know, I, I've just been uh, drawing things in my notebook. And so a good example of like the process from uh, notebook to actual product is the drafting board itself. So I started out with this, um, pretty similar to some things I had seen online for artists boards, uh, but I had added it. So like usually an artist board will have like a little lip at the bottom here um, to put your pencils in, but that's annoying for getting in the way of tools. Um, so I'd made like a little cross uh, wire pulley system and then um, made a couple other drawings of it. So 
I drew um, how that cross wire might work with some brackets and fittings. Um, and then I drew it again with these slots so I wouldn't have to go around the board because I wanted, you know, uh, traditionally the bracket would go around the outside of the board, but I wanted it to fold up. I didn't want things to fall out of the case. So I had these slots and I didn't really know what to do. And then I came to just sort of this uh, parallel slot system here and then I was thinking um, this system does not have like a, a T-track. It could just sit here and pop off and I didn't want it to pop off. I wanted it to lock in and so then I drew this guy. I don't know if you can see here um, these little T cross sections yeah, which yeah, yeah. are um, you know this guy. So uh, right. what happens is um, there's a captured nut in this block and so I'll turn down when I get the right M8 screw I'll turn down a nut and it'll push this way and these uh, pieces will push up against uh, the top of these rails and lock into place and the advantage of that while maybe not as nice in terms of motion as a uh, cross wire system is I don't need anything to wrap around the lip of the board or um, go through it. Um, so then once I did that, I drew this version. Um, this is hand drawing, no tools with just sort of like, you know, a handle and a couple of slots and places to put things. And I had at some point like this uh, recessed portion for uh, the piece that, um, you know, uh, determines the angle of the board. Then I drew in these hinges here and then I got out my colored pencils and started drawing overlapping cross sections of these hinges and finally settled on this one, which I actually had to modify when I got to CAD and figured the math out such that this doesn't actually work. I had to move the hinge kind of out a little bit, which you see here, but it's uh, not super objectionable. Um, then I used a little T-square here and drew um, this handle, which I guess the handle is here. It uses a bunch of wood pieces and these two handle scales that I 3D printed and these blocks in here that, uh, you know, hold the pivot and these blocks that um, are the outside of the pivot. And so I drew, you know, all of that and how they would mount. And then I left the guidelines in as um, lines that show where screws would go. Mm. And then I drew like a little orthographic uh, side cut so that I could see. And this was actually super helpful in um, actually doing the CAD drafting for mm. the handle. And then I did a uh, drafting briefcase closure uh, clasp style. So like I did the classic clasp, which is a really good one out of metal. But if you were to make this out of plastic, it would have to be really beefy. And I didn't like that. And then I thought about this sort of swinging one. I don't know. Can you see mm -hmm. the drawings mm -hmm. this small? Uh, and I didn't like that. And then this is actually the clasp system of the back of the Bronco pan. Mm. Um, and I thought that was okay, but like it was finicky to put together and I didn't like that. And then so I drew a side view and this view of like a buckle. Mm. Um, and then I thought about a screw tab. And finally I came to this style of system, which is actually very similar to the back on a graph lock back or even the homunculus, which is a camera that I make. Mm. And so eventually it kind of looked like that. And then I drew um, <clears throat> a isometric of how that, uh, the angle selecting prop works. Mm. And then I kind of drew the layout one more time. And then the morning before I drew it in CAD, I just spent like an hour, uh, which seems like a very long time to draw something like this, but I used tools to make sure everything was straight and drew kind of like a final version of it. Um, these notches wound up being different because I didn't bother doing the math of, you know, what angle this board had to be at, what angle the prop had to be at, and then what angle the cut had to be at because I knew that I could just figure that out by rotating things in SolidWorks, which I did. But, you know, um, also like the handle, I could have gotten out a little tiny French curve and tried to make that or use my compass is really too big to make it at that scale. It's kind of why I'm looking forward to drawing on a larger scale, but I just drew the block outline of this handle knowing that uh, later on I would put in, you know, this handle. Um, but other than that, like I think I did a pretty good job of drawing what the thing would look like to scale. 
So now that you're kind of using this hybrid process of like sketching and, and then going into CAD, where do you see the future of your design techniques going? I mean, I don't think it's such a, like a crazy hybrid process. I think every industrial designer and mechanical engineer uses some mixture of drawing, whether it's like, you know, 2D drawing on a computer or on a paper uh, and then CAD. But I mean, there's a couple of projects that I really need to finish first. I've made a couple of sketches for my next camera project. What I really like to do is spend an entire day, like 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., and just draw every aspect of a camera, right? So like uh, orthographic and isometric views of every mechanism of the whole thing together exploded, right? To, and it'll take me a whole day, uh, at least. But what I hope is that if I work it out on paper over the course of a day, then I can do the entire CAD job in a day as opposed to a week and a half, mm. uh, which is usually what it takes me. And then, mm. you know, of course, there'll be like, you know, I only draw really to make physical objects. Um, and so there'll be the same process of, you know, whenever I print something out or laser cut or whatever, then I got to sit down and like take notes by hand of like what doesn't work and then take it back into CAD. And I don't think that will change. And I think like designing something is one thing, figuring out the tolerances so it works nicely is another thing. Um, I haven't figured out a way to speed that up, but you know, it's just kind of <laughs> kind of how it works. So now that you're building like a library of sketch journals, how does that work as far as archiving? Is that going to be a resource for you to go back and look at? It's a good question. Um, yeah, so like it's more than just sketches. Like I try and take note of like what I did in a day and anything that happens that's funny. Uh, I went to my cousin's wedding before this whole uh, coronavirus thing and like I was taking notes in like kind of a way that like I, I love taking pictures of like funny actions but it's really hard right you have to be uh, really quick with like a notebook if something funny happens you can write it down five minutes later or ten minutes later whatever and so um, I've I really dug that and sort of like catching humor let's see on 619 I drew this diagram of something that I'm working on. I refer to it like, I don't know, three to six times a day for reference. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's really useful. Like, I mean, I could have done this on a computer and eventually I did, but um, yeah, it's just nice to have it like up while I'm making a PCB or whatever I'm doing. Well, Ethan, thank you for your time today. It was great hanging out with you again. Okay, you take it easy. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, and you guys, you take it easy and stay creative. Have a great day.